Good morning. I gave myself permission to play on this first service of mine for Christmas, and I need room to spread out. <laughs> so you see the big book is out. So what I'd like to start with, will you play with me? This is fun for Cindy. Yeah. This is Cindy fun. OK. When Noel looks scared, <laughs> where are we going today? OK. When you think of Christmas, y'all, what and y'all out there can answer this question as well. What elements or components do you think of when you think of the Christmas story, Jesus' birth? Mm -hmm. What else? The star. Okay. Shepherds. Manger. Hope. Miracles. Takes me a while to write. Um, someone said something else I didn't write down. Star, shepherd, manger. Angels, thank you. Okay. So those are the components that you think of for Christmas. Okay. All right. Now forget them. We'll get back there. What I wanted to share with you is uh, the Christmas story that we inherited. And so this is my great joy to do this, and I thank you, Father, for guiding me through this. So I'm asking for the words that will be enlightened to you. So as you know, in the New Testament, those of you that are Bible people, there are four books of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that chronicle Jesus' life. Those are the only four books in the Bible that chronicle Jesus' life. Say, I knew that. Yeah. Of all the big old huge Bible here, there's four books. In those four books, only two of them even address his birth, and that's Matthew and Luke. Luke, did you know that? Okay, good. All right. I'm going to walk you through Matthew. Good answer. So I'm going to walk you through Matthew. You guys ready? Now, this is the story of Jesus' birth, according to Matthew. And when we talk about Matthew, we're not talking about Matthew the man who was a disciple of Jesus. These, are, these books are the teachings of whoever it is. This is the teaching of Matthew. Matthew probably never put pen to paper. But someone, at some point, chronicled the teachings of Matthew. And I believe at this point, and I may be wrong because I can't, they may have done new discoveries, but from what I understand, the oldest chronicled book, it dates to 100 AD, Book of Matthew. So these are the writings that were inherited as the teachings of Matthew. So we don't, we, let's get the proper position, okay? All right. So Matthew starts out like this. This is the birth story of Jesus, the birth of Jesus. First of all, we have a great genealogy that chronicles the history of Jesus' birth from Abraham all the way down to Joseph. And then it says th that Joseph the hu was the husband of Mary through whom Jesus was born, who is called Christ. But we have this chronicling of ge genealogy to Abraham. Check? Okay. In the story, it says, the birth of Jesus was acquired in this manner. Mary was acquired for a price by Joseph, which means there was a dowry that he paid for her. You know, back in the day, marriage were, marriages were negotiated. But before they came together, she was found with child of Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, was a pious man and did not wish to make it public, so he was thinking of divorcing her secretly. Hmm. While he was considering this, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because he that is being born is of Holy Spirit. She will give birth. You will call him Jesus. All of this happened, which was spoken of by the Lord, so that the prophecy would be fulfilled. Then it goes on to talk about the, prof the prophecy of the virgin giving birth. Joseph rose up from his sleep and did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and he took his wife, and he did not know her until she gave birth. Okay, that's the conception story in Matthew. Here's the birth story. Jesus was born in Bethlehem of, Jude of Judah in the days of Herod the king, and Magi came from Jerusalem. That's your birth story. Okay? 
Magi came and said, where is this king? They came to his town, came to, to Jerusalem. Where is this king? For we have seen his star. And Herod the king said, who are these wise men coming into my town? And so he gathered all of his scribes and said, what is going on? And the scribes went to the prophecies and said, there is a prophecy that this king will be born in the city of Bethlehem. And so Herod told the Magi, go find that king and come back and tell me what's happening. And this is what happened. So they went, they followed the star, and they were taken to a house where they saw the infant Mary, the infant and Mary. They worshipped the baby, and they offered him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now, we don't understand frankincense and myrrh. We understand gold. But all three were uh, monetary commodities. Frankincense was of monetary value. Myrrh was of monetary value. And gold was of monetary value. You guys with me so far? Good story, huh? Then they were told in a dream not to go back to Herod because Herod had bad tidings for the babe. They went. Then Joseph was told in a dream, go to Egypt, you're not safe. He went. Herod got mad and said, I shall kill all the babies. So Herod went to the little town where they, they were born and killed all the children, boys, that were under two. Killed them all so that a prophecy would be fulfilled. Then the prophecy was fulfilled, and then the great weeping occurred, and then Joseph was in Egypt, and he had a dream again, and he was told again in a dream to go back. Then he was told again in a dream to go to Nazareth so another prophecy could be fulfilled. That's the birth of Jesus. What do you think? There we go. Okay, so this is what we see. Did you notice that there was a lot of guys in this story? Did you notice there's a lot of prophecies in this story? Okay, and there is a lot of lack of support in this story. So we have... um, In this story, powerful men trying to destroy that which is being born. In this story, we have a need for the baby to be saved. In this story, God speaks to people in dreams, but who does he speak to? Men. He speaks to the men in dreams. He speaks to the men in dreams. And the baby is saved, but is every child saved? No, there are are children that are killed. So there is a sacrifice in this story for the children to protect the baby that came. So we have this huge male authority that is against the birth. We have the male at first not wanting to be a part of it, you know? And then we have the whole male authority being against the birth and the dreams protected. This story is about God working through men. So here's bottom line it. The male had to agree, number one, But then the wise men, the wise males, came and honored. Powerful men tried to destroy male opposition. God saved them through the dreams. It is tied to the prophecy. What we're looking at, this is the path of the Christ. This is how the Christ consciousness got brought into a group of people. And it was through this method. Matthew was a Jew. He was teaching Jews about Jesus. So the way he taught them was to tie down prophecies. The way he taught them was to make make God save Jesus from the get-go, from the opposition, because they lived in oppression. So as the Christmas story is told in this very male-dominant and aggressive way, the Jewish mind would go, I'm getting it. I can accept the story of this man. Do you hear what I'm saying? It was the path into their consciousness that, that they could access Jesus Christ, the energy of Jesus. So the mind had to accept. The power had to acquiesce in the story. They had to be protected. But God would save. And was not salvation what they were looking for? The Jews at the time were oppressed. They were looking for salvation. Got it? But it was the path that they could accept. Matthew. How much of Matthew do we keep? I'm just saying. Okay, we're going to go to Luke now. Y'all, are you having fun yet? Yes. The story of the birth is quite elaborate in Luke. 
And Luke, we, as you know, Luke did not know Jesus. Luke was not a disciple or an apostle. Luke was a physician who traveled with Paul, who was an apostle, who also never knew Jesus in the flesh. You know, they had spiritual meetings, but never knew him in the flesh. So Luke is um, writing because someone has asked him to. And I've always called Luke like a reporter. It's almost like he's interviewed people, and he's writing down what they said. So Luke's writings are very elaborately conversational, very elaborately conversational. So we don't know exactly. Again, again, the writings are 100 years old, the writings of Luke. Who knows? It? Who knows? This is what we inherited. Very ready? All right. As it begins, we're told the story of John the Baptist. Now, John wasn't even mentioned in Matthew, was he? We're told the story of Zacharias, which is uh, married to Elizabeth, who was Mary's cousin, Mary, the mother's cousin. And they're old. They have no children. And an angel appears to Zacharias, who's a priest, and he says to him, fear not. The angel does not talk to him in a dream. The angel appears to him in the flesh. And Zacharias, who is a priest is startled, obviously, and the angel says, fear not. How would you feel if an angel appeared in front of you? (laughs) You would need to hear, fear not. (laughs) Fear not, Bonnie. (laughs) And the angel said, I'm going to give you all a son. You will name him John, and he's going to be a great man and gives him lots of words about what John's going to do. And you all know if your Bible, John preached Jesus is coming. You know, he was the, the way shower. Okay. He spoke of Jesus coming. Then we switch immediately to, and this angel identified himself as Gabriel. Then immediately we see this young girl named Mary, and this angel appears before her and immediately says, fear not. Because Mary's startled and afraid. And then he said, I have good tidings for you. You're going to be this. You're going to give birth to a child, blah, blah, blah. Mary says to him, how is that possible? I've known no man. And then the angel said, the Holy Spirit will come on you and you will give birth and blah, blah, blah. Okay. What we have immediately is otherworldly things interacting in the world of man. We have the angel appearing. We have the discourse. And the first thing the angel says is, fear not. Okay. There is a lot of talking. And there is a lot of praising God. And we're praising God for this, and we're praising God for that, and we are really praising God. And I'm not diminishing it. I'm just saying they are praising God. They are not tying down prophecy. So you say, why not, Cindy? Oh, I have a good answer for you. (laughs) Do you know who Paul ministered unto? They were called Gentiles. They were pagans. They wouldn't have known the prophecies if you told them. They were not Jews. But they were used to multiple gods. And do you know what they were also used to? Gods mating with humans in their histories. That was not uncommon that a god might one day mate with somebody and have a superhuman being. None of this was outside of their realm of possibilities. Do you see? And who are we dealing with? Angels talking to us. So lots of praising. Everybody's very faithful. Then we make our way to chapter 2. Chapter 2. And you can read it, please. There's lots of good stuff. It happened in the days of Caesar Augustus that there was to be a census. Remember that? A taxation. And every man had to go to his own city. So this is when Joseph takes his family to Bethlehem. When they arrived, it says that there was no place. She gave birth and laid him in a manger because there was no room where they were lodging for the baby and him. Okay? So, very familiar, right? That's different than Joseph wanting to divorce his wife, right? That wasn't familiar, was it? This is familiar. So, there were shepherds in the region, and they were staying, and they were watching their flocks. And behold, the angel of God came to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, about them, and they were in great fear. And what did the angel say to them? Fear not. not, Do not be afraid. (laughs) Again, we have angels in the flesh looking at people and saying, don't be afraid. Three times. Three times. Okay. 
Then they say a savior is being born. You shall find the babe in the manger. And then the, there was the heavenly host appeared, praising God, glory to God in the highest, peace and good hope for men. It came to pass, and you will hear all of this on Christmas Eve. Yeah, and it came, yeah, because because you read it, and it came to pass. <laughs> And it came to pass that the shepherds <laughs> go to the manger, and they see Mary and the babe. They tell them everything they've done, everything they saw. There was a whole lot of praising, and that was it. That is your Christmas story. There is no male opposition. There are no wise men. There is no star. There is a simple story of a girl having an angelic experience, the little family goes to Bethlehem, there's no place, they deliver in a manger, and the shepherds see the angel, and the shepherds go and talk to them. Do you see how the elements are missing? This is a very simple, sweet story, isn't it? And it is human contact with the angelic. So it's slightly different, is it not? All right. In this book, we are talking about personal relationships with the divine. We are talking about don't be afraid God has you. And the promises of the blessings in God's goodwill. Females play a major point in the story. I did not read everything to you, but Elizabeth and Mary play a major point in the story. Would that have gone well ta- teaching Jewish men? No, because you all know that in the Jewish religion at that time, the women were separated. And they were told not to speak in church. They had their own place that they would go to to worship, and the male, the men were dominant. And it was not, um, not appropriate for a woman to teach or interact with men religiously, you know, about theology. They just were not. No, 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 no. And we all know that Christianity survived and prevailed because the women kept it going. The women kept the home hearth burning and kept teaching their children and teaching the people and gathering this place. The men might have gathered and talked, but the women kept it going. And that's when the religion became, Christianity made it equal. Luke is introducing the female power. And what is it but a simple and humble receptivity? So we have females playing a major part, God, and God will tell everybody that needs to know. So it's a condition of personal relationship with God. Hmm. That is a story that the pagan Gentiles could have received. Walking in a personal way with God, that is how they could have found the entry of Christ of consciousness into them. Got it? Okay. We tell stories. And in the stories we tell, we shift to make it reflect us. And that's why we don't tell Matthew's story much, do we? We don't tell Matthew's story, but we have a few elements out of Matthew's story. What do we take? The The star and the wise man. Why? The star represents divine guidance. And the wise men are so smart, and they bring us wealth. They bring us money. You know, a lot of people come to metaphysics when they are in lack. And what's the first thing they start praying for? Wise men, I need some wise men to bring me money. I need some wise men to bring me some gold and some myrrh, and I need some wise men to teach me what I need to know so I can be prosperous in the world. We need our wise men, don't we? And then second thing they ask for is the star. Okay, now give me a guiding star. People new to metaphysics, do you know how many of them ask for an angel to stand in front of them? No. For I will be afraid. I would just like to have some food on the table. I would like to have some money in my bank account. And I would like to mm, have you guide me so I can make a choice whether I do it or not. Very simple. We love Matthew's points, don't we? So we keep those in our story. We had them in our story, didn't we? We wrote them down. Okay. I will eventually want to take some shepherds into my story as well. Because the shepherds are the people that humbly support my journey. 
The shepherds see my potential. The wise men see my potential, and they support my journey. These are the humble people that will actually be with us. These are the people around you. This room is full of shepherds for you. They will support you. This is why we church, so we can support each other, so we can become that shepherd for one another. We don't come to church so that we can all be each other's wise men in knowledge or support. We come to be a community. And most people who come are completely unaware that they are birthing the Christ in them. There is a baby that's being born. The baby loses it in the story. The circumstances become the big deal. But there is a baby that's going to need to be fed, that's going to need to grow. And that is the Christ within each individual as we come into this crisis story. So yes, we want our guidance and the Christ in me needs to grow. Oh, I got to feed that Christ? Yes. Oh, let me still just think about the star. Do you hear what I'm saying? These, the story that we currently tell is our way to let the Christ within us be born, but we have to feed it. Okay. So our path, we've created a story that represents our, our path. Uh, you know, the shepherds are the salt of the earth, they're the r- humble people, God everywhere, God talking to everybody. This is just as beautiful that there, you don't have to be in an elevated state to hear God. God can talk to anybody anywhere. We have the personal relationship with the angels, and God is love, fear not. How much of the story of Matthew, we've talked about that. We don't talk about all the male oppression. How much of the story of Luke, we talk about that more. Because we need that personal relationship. And that is our end to God. Got it? Okay. So what did we say? Where's my notes? The star, we have a star which is the divine guidance. That's out of Matthew. We had the manger, which is Luke. Matthew doesn't mention the manger. And Luke is the fact that even though the world doesn't love us, there is still a place for us. So that's in our story. Even though the world doesn't love us, there's a place for us. We have the shepherds, which is, like I just said, the support, the beautiful beings that support us, and the angels, the divine presence of the celestial. So is everybody here ready to see an angel appear before you? Yes. And I say to you, fear not. (laughs) So we're ready to let the divine angels come to us. And then we talked about uh, emotional states, peace. What did the angels say? Peace and good hope for mankind. That's what it translates to, not goodwill to mankind, but good hope for mankind. That is what the Aramaic says. So peace, hope, and the miracles. The miracle of the Christmas story is actually the fact that everything came together in one moment where heaven and earth was one. The divine was present with the human. Okay, so sometimes when we do the manger, so these are are pieces of our story. Mankind doesn't always have space to include us, but God does. We always have the guiding star. We have access to that personal relationship with God. And you don't go to find the Christ. It is born within you. And as the Christ is born within you, who feeds it? We do. You know, we never think about what Joseph and Mary did with the gold, myrrh, and frankincense. I say they bought diapers. That's what I say. I say they used it for their family. They used it for support. They didn't put it in a college fund. It was for them to support the birth and the, the growth of that Christ, which means we, too, can't put our Christ on a pedestal and say, someday I will grow into it. No. The Christ grows in you, so I must feed it and care for it every day, every day. Okay. So our Christmas story, our Christmas story is the path of the Christ in us. So as I've been going through it, if you found any of the points or the components that you resonated with, that's personal for you. That gives you homework. That gives you something to do. I want to see an angel. Well, by golly, I'm going to start asking to see an angel. I really like the star. I'm going to go look at the stars. I'm going to ask to follow the star. Whatever, is with it, whatever hit you in these components is your path to you, to birthing at a higher level that Christ in you. Got it? Okay. 
We will tell our stories until we don't tell them that way anymore. And I wanted to share this. I watched a show recently. It was a cute little movie. It was really cute. Patrick and I watched it. It was sweet. It was about Christmas. It was adorable. It was adorable. It, the movie was trying to define the word Christmas. And it was defining the word Christmas to mean love and acceptance of one another. And I thought, well, okay, I mean, Christmas, God is love. And if God is love and love and acceptance of each other, that's God. So that, uh, um, yeah, I'm not going to call it bad. I'm going to call it good. But for me and who I am in my story, my story needs Christ, the Christ consciousness. My story needs that knowing of the being that brought the love of God to the planet in a way that we can access, in a way that opens us up. My Christmas needs that in it. But we will watch our world, and our world may start to redesign its story. Our world may redesign the story of Christmas for what it needs. I want you to have your story of what you need. And I need that Christ. Yes, God is love. God is love. God is love. Yes, if we love one another a thousand percent, we are living in God consciousness. Absolutely. But I'm just old enough, just old enough, that I still need that walk, that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I need the spiritual reality of a human that walked as God on this planet for my story. So... We all birth our Christ individually. We all will have our own path. But what we do know for a fact is Jesus Christ was born. <laughs> we don't have no idea. Virgin birth, who knows? You know, there's, there's, there's things about it could possibly have actually been, and there's things that say, you know, if you translate it literally, it just means a young girl. You know? Who knows? Who knows? It matters not. It does not matter. But the stories give us the pathway to the various levels of consciousness in the people. Now we choose our pathway. We choose our pathway in. And next Sunday night at 730, you're going to see the metaphysical interpretation of the birth of Jesus, which is fabulous. <laughs> but I hope this was fun for you to hear it. Was it fun to hear the different things? Yes. Was it fun to realize how much it's changed? And how it's targeted for different audiences. And now it needs to be targeted for you individually. All right, let's go within. Father, Mother, God, we open our hearts. We have gone through the pages of this book, this book that holds the vibration of hope for mankind, the book that holds the love of God and the trials and tribulations of man. But Father, we breathe in the love and the hope. And I ask that your energy just begin to engulf us all. And as it moves, I ask that each one begin to feel the angelic forces around them. Beautiful angel energies that guide and teach and hold them safe. And as you open to that and you begin to feel them, there is nothing to fear. Open to feel the love, the support. Feel the presence of Jesus Christ stepping forward. Feel his peace. And as you take his hand, feel your own light, the light in your heart, your Christ, your I am. And begin to feel that you are his brother or sister. You too, child of God. And feel the love. And let your eye just go to a vision or an energy perception of your life. As child of God, is my life representing what I want, who I am? 
And realize that if you feel a sense of change or a desire to change, realize your heart is opening. You are ready. You are desiring to change. You are desiring to make it different. You are desiring to birth a newness within you. And there is no opposition. There is only love. And just focus back on Jesus Christ by your side. Feel the love of Father, Mother, God. And God, we thank you for this moment in time, for this illusion that we call reality. We thank you that we get to know ourselves as creators. And I choose you, God. I choose love. And breathe. Send your love into your world. And if you are ready, you can choose to feed and nurture that inner Christ. And we thank you, God. And so it is. Okay, you can gently open your eyes. If anyone has ever studied Bible with me, <laughs> we go for it. I hope that was fun for you, and I hope that as you're going about your Christmas uh, celebrations that you start feeling the beautiful Christmas energy, which is truly the love of God and the love that we have for one another, and that knowing that I am perfect. I may not be looking that way right now, but inside I am. I'm perfect, I'm divine, I'm, I'm amazingly God's child. And I can do it different every day to show that greater and greater. So let's walk this Christmas season with that Christ that came to us and the Christ within us guiding. Now say yay God. Yay, God. <laughs>